Hello friends, James Stevenson back with another episode of Who's Hating Hard on Tesla today. Once again, it is Lynette Lopez. If you've been around for very long, you know Lynette Lopez hates Elon Musk and looks for any chance to uh, write a long article letting us know that. Uh, I'll check in with my co-host Loki, who has turned around in bed and faced the other direction. You can see his head and his ears a little better than you could in the previous videos. Uh, but I'll go ahead and run the Who's Hating Hard on Tesla Today sizzle in honor of Lynette Lopez once again. She's been featured a few times before. Uh, and share my desktop with you to show you how I learned about the existence of this article posted four hours ago by Business Insider. I was tagged by Ikapob at E-K-A-P-O-B-X, uh, who said, Hey James, you and Loki should do a special episode for a special person. Hint, definitely just a pile of dirt. Uh, that's a reference to the uh, um, the muddy field with some digging going on, is how uh, Lynette described the Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory in 2019, uh, strongly implying that it would not be producing any Teslas by the end of that year, and she was wrong. It was. Uh, who's hating hard on Elon today? Yeah, that's what this article's about. It's not really, uh, mostly about Tesla. It's mostly about Elon and, uh, Lynette's longstanding vendetta against him. She just hates Elon Musk a lot. Uh, most of the criticism she's received over the past five years has probably come, uh, from people who appreciate that Elon Musk is a smart person, uh, and that Lynette Lopez's uh, predictions were wrong. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up her article and read through it together if we can do it without laughing. Let's see what we have here. Uh, the headline, Elon Musk is cracking under the pressure of the biggest gamble he's ever taken in his life. Uh, so there's a lot of gambling uh, terminology referenced here. That's the, the theme Lynette went with. Elon Musk was on a heater. Uh, it's an expression for uh, having a good run of cards in Blackjack. Uh, or, I guess, other games, possibly. From 2019 to 2022, it seemed as if every gamble Musk took was paying off. Tesla was consistently profitable for the first time in its history, and its stock soared as its massive new Shanghai plant ramped up production over the strenuous objection of Lynette Lopez, who said it's getting harder and harder to believe that Tesla will be producing vehicles from this factory in uh, 2020. And they did. Uh, SpaceX rockets captivated the public's attention. Even when they blew up, everyone still clapped. So it, the, the blowing up was the test flights that blew up, not the, uh, you know active missions. Uh, everyone still clapped. Accusations of corruption and self-dealing slid right off Musk's back. Accusations from her, I guess. Uh, let's see. T okay, yeah. Solar City Tesla shareholder lawsuit. Elon Musk wins uh, is what she's referring to. So they, they uh, went to court and they battled it out and a judge decided that Elon Musk should win. So... That'll tell you what you need to know there. Oh, that was the uh, the lawsuit over people disagreeing with the vote. The shareholders voted and said that uh, uh, Elon should get his compensation package or the Solar City lawsuit, whatever. Uh, <laughs> every time Tesla Q says this lawsuit is going to bring Tesla down, and then every time Tesla wins the lawsuit. Uh, Musk could do and say anything he wanted, and success followed. He was even named Times 2021 Person of the Year. Then Musk did what every risk-addicted blackjack player inevitably does. Pushed his luck too far. Okay, Lynette, how do you do that? Overconfidence, confirmation bias, and delusions of control led to a string of bad decisions, and boom, Elon's empire is in trouble again. There's no confirmation bias in the Tesla Q side, though, right? Tesla Q members like Vicky Bryan of Vicky Bryan's Bond Angle, longtime Tesla hater, longtime Tesla Q member, they would never uh, fall victim to confirmation bias, hearing criticism they like uh, and agree with, and thus sign on to whether it's accurate or not. The change of fortune was apparent at the New York Times Dealbook conference last week during an interview with host Andrew Ross Sorkin. The recognizable tells 
that Musk's hand had gone cold were everywhere. So tells uh, in in card playing are behaviors or mannerisms, uh, maybe ticks or whatever that give away whether someone's bluffing or not. Elon raged at the very people who will dictate Twitter's fate. Well, no, he raged at the people who are blackmailing him or trying to blackmail him. Uh, it wasn't uh, the people who will dictate Twitter's fate. Uh, he seemed baffled by key questions about the future of his companies and offered non-apologies for his unhinged antisocial behavior online. I don't know what she's referring to there. Uh, Sorkin suggested Musk's brain is like a storm, but it sounded more like two cats fighting to get out of the duffel bag. Th this is the quality of the journalism you get from Business Insider in general and from Lynette Lopez in particular. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what it looks like when Musk realizes he's in a jam entirely of his own making, I know, because we've seen it before, including back in 2018, when he nearly flew Tesla into a mountain. He may find a way to ward off calamity as he did then, but this jam is a much tighter one than the last one. Is it? Really? Uh, Musk, so, yeah, so Tesla, by Elon's account, was close to bankruptcy in 2018, I think they still had options for stuff they could have done that Elon didn't want to do to keep the company going, and they didn't have to do any of those things. But uh, he has not described Tesla being in trouble these days. And if you examine the balance sheets, well, not you, Lynette, I know you're, you're not capable of doing financial analysis, but someone who is could look at Tesla's balance sheet and see that they're one of the strongest companies in the world financially at this time. Musk has to contend with over 13 billion of debt still weighing down a swiftly sinking Twitter. Now, why do you think Twitter is swiftly sinking, Lynette? Tesla's profits shrinking because of a lack of demand in new products. Okay, so it, it used to be Tesla was structurally unprofitable and could never post an annual profit. That, that used to be the story. Now it's Tesla's profits shrinking. Well, they may still be producing positive numbers every quarter that are much larger than the losses that they used to post. But uh, let's move the goalposts to if they aren't at all-time highs, then Tesla's in a lot of trouble. Uh, because of a lack of demand. All right, let's 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 take a look at the lack of demand. I, I know I showed this in a previous video. So here were Tesla's U.S. sales in 2022, and here are the sales in 2023. It would look the same. Uh, if I were to look at the global sales, here's the other way of looking at it. Uh, which EV maker has increased their EV sales in the U.S. by the most? It's Tesla, and it's not close. Uh, Tesla is uh, increasing their sales of EVs in the U.S. by more than three times the second place brand, Chevrolet, uh, according to that chart. A lack of demand and new products. Uh, there was a Cybertruck launch, which uh, I guess she'll talk about later, but we're not going to count that one. Uh, and we're not going to count the Model 3 Highland refresh either. And a world that is generally sick of his shtick. Uh, in Musk land, everything is connected by money. Problems at one business bleed into others. That's why Elon is being exceptionally obstinate. It's not just your imagination. His luck has changed. Uh, and now we're on to the next chapter of the article. 2018, the first Annas Horribilis. Uh, stay away from this headline, Jeremy Judkins. I see you looking for a pun. Uh, if you want to understand Musk's latest unhinged behavior, it, it's helpful to understand the reasons he's lashed out in the past. So let me take you back to the wild ride that was 2018. Musk had bet Tesla's future on the Model 3, with an intended starting price of $30,000. Now, hold on. It was $35,000. It was famously the $35,000 car. Uh, in 2016, 2015, uh, you know, when it was being talked about before it was launched, it was going to be the $35,000 car. And then Tesla did sell it in 2019 for $35,000. You can still find the reviews up on YouTube of the people who were able to buy it at that price. Uh, for a brief period of time, the standard range, with no options, 
Uh, the car was supposed to make EVs accessible to drivers who couldn't afford luxury prices, but Tesla's investors got increasingly restless as the model became trapped in what Musk called production hell. The pressure to get the Model 3 out clearly weighed on Musk, and he was not subtle about it. On Tesla's first quarter earnings call, he cut off one analyst's basic financial question, a question in fact so basic that it had already been answered in the investor letter that Tesla published before the earnings call began. Uh, Elon said, boring boneheaded questions are not cool because the analyst was wasting everyone's time answering a question that he could have known the answer to, Tony Sakanagi, had he read the press release from Tesla, because that's where the answer to his question was. He got so frustrated, Elon ditched the analysts entirely and started taking questions, as planned, uh, from fans posting on YouTube. Eventually, he even begged skeptical Tesla investors to please sell our stock. Well, specifically, he said, if volatility is your primary concern, please sell our stock and do not buy it again. Because that's where the volatility was coming from. People buying and selling in and out. Uh, there, there would be less volatility if there were fewer people buying and selling all the time, right? That's the idea. Uh, so yeah, Elon was saying, if, if volatility concerns you, please sell our stock and do not buy it again. When Musk is at his most hungry for cash, he tends to bite the hand that feeds. Does he? Uh, in Lynette Lopez's book, he does. Musk also became more active on Twitter around this time, often with erratic results. When a professional diver uh, complained that Musk was distracting from efforts to rescue a children's soccer team that had been trapped in a cave in Thailand, Musk called the diver a pedo guy and harassed him on Twitter. So if a mistake is worth making once, it's worth making twice. Uh, Vernon Unsworth is not a diver. He's not a diver. He's a British expat living in Thailand who was exploring a cave, right? Not a diver. The professional dive team got the, rescued those kids from the cave, not Vernon Unsworth. Um, he used the platform to whine about the media, attack investors betting against Tesla stock, and even tweeted that he would be taking Tesla private at the price of $420 a share when there was no such deal in place except that there was a court case about this, and there was. Uh, <laughs> Tesla was, as Musk later admitted, near death and Summers production hell. There wasn't a signed agreement, but there was a handshake agreement on that funding. Uh, it was about to turn into Autumn's logistics hell. Tesla's salvation came in the form of the Chinese Communist Party. In 2019, his executives were fleeing Tesla, and the company continued to bleed cash. Who does this sound like? It sounds like Lynette's friend Jim Chanos, who may have helped her write this article, fuming from having to shut down Kenneco's Associates uh, after blowing more than 90% of its assets under management over the past five years, shorting Tesla the whole time. Musk struck a deal to build a factory in Shanghai. From permitting the construction to opening, the Shanghai Gigafactory was built in just 168 working days a feat which Lynette Lopez promised at the time could not happen because it was too crazy to believe, she said. Skeptical observers, myself included, were blindsided. What we failed to appreciate was the staggering power of the CCP when it's aggressively pushing to meet a single goal. Oh yeah, Tesla had nothing to do with building <laughs> the Giga uh, Factory in Shanghai. G GF3 went up solely as a result of the CCP's efforts, uh, which is why uh, th they're always able to build auto factories that quickly. Wait, does that happen? Does that happen? Uh, that, that put out uh, a product as good as uh, Tesla Model 3s and Model Ys? I don't think it does. Uh, when the party said Tesla could build the factory there, they meant immediately, well, yeah, I mean, that's the whole reason you meet with the government in advance is to try to make sure that there's no obstacles they're going to put in your way to slow you down. Generally, there are two different lessons a person can take from surviving a brush with near ruin. They can learn to be more conscious, or they can decide they're indestructible and tempt fate. 
Without China, Tesla would not have finally turned into a real car company, in Musk's own words. Well, I don't think he said it that way. I think he said Tesla became a real car company when they were free cash flow positive. And that did happen after the Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory opened, but uh, I don't know if uh, Elon would have characterized it exactly this way. He dodged destruction and started to settle down and focus on other projects like Starlink. Sure, he was still wilding out on Twitter, but at least he wasn't bawling to Rolling Stone about how badly he needs a girlfriend to be happy. I mean, these are low blows from Lynette Lopez. Uh, but uh, th these were her standards. She's sharing them with you. At last, it seemed the Musk universe had found some kind of frenzied equilibrium. Generally, there are two different kinds, uh, two different lessons a person can learn we saw above. Uh, I don't think I need to tell you which path Musk chose. Uh, yeah, we know uh, she thinks that Elon decided he is indestructible. Uh, I I don't agree, but uh, you're you're reading Lynette Lopez's article, so you get her opinion. All of Elon World is Connected is the title of her next chapter of this article. Say what you want about him, but Elon Musk has ambition. On top of the world, in early 2022, Musk decided he had the power to single-handedly fix the entire concept of free speech. And given that he is hopelessly addicted to the adulation he gets from Twitter, that's where he figured he would start. Well, maybe Lynette read the Twitter files, and maybe she didn't. Uh, maybe she's aware of the kind of censorship uh, the limitations uh, placed on free expression by our own government officials in the U.S. Uh, communicating directly with Twitter employees to pull down posts, to shadow ban accounts, to suspend accounts from Twitter, uh, limiting their free speech, right? Uh, that all was happening, and you won't find out about it from Lynette Lopez in this article. Uh, but if you follow Matt Taibbi, uh, he will educate you <laughs> on what was actually going on before Elon took over Twitter. We all know this part of the story, Lynette uh, says, resuming the article. Musk started building a stake in Twitter in early, early 2022, then offered to buy it outright. He offered such a ridiculously high price that the board couldn't say no, except the board did say no. They adopted a poison pill clause right away to prevent themselves from being purchased. This is very comical. Uh, they didn't want to be purchased for $54.20 per share, even though that was a huge premium over where the stock was trading at the time. A consortium of banks led by Morgan Stanley loaned him a large portion of the money, and finally, after trying and then failing to renege on the deal, he bought Twitter. Not long after completing the deal, Musk exhausted all the ideas to turn around the platform and was left with angry former employees, skeptical advertisers, a terrible new name, and a massive pile of debt owed to the Boy Scouts over on Wall Street. I mean, th this article couldn't sound more like Jim Chanos helped Lynette Lopez write it. That's just, you know, my, my opinion, but uh, <laughs> that's... Uh, maybe she's adopted his writing style over the years. I don't know. Uh, but very funny that she left out that part of it uh, where the board tried to prevent Elon from buying it. And then when he said, OK, I'm not going to buy it, they flipped, changed their mind and said, we'll sue you if you don't buy it uh, and forced him to buy at that initial offer price. Uh, nowadays, some analysts like Vicki Bryan, there she is, I teased her earlier, longtime Tesla Q member, longtime uh, skeptic of uh, Tesla publicly, uh, you know, with a, a record of predictions no better than any longtime Tesla Q members. The CEO of the research firm Bond Angle, I don't know if there are more, if Bond Angle has more than one employee. I know they have Vicki Bryan suspected that Twitter is spending much more than it's able to generate or borrow, so a Tesla Q member thinks Twitter is in a lot of trouble, is what you get for the next paragraph. With the company still burning cash and $1.3 to $1.5 billion in annual interest due over the past year, I had expected Twitter to live on borrowed time, Brian wrote in a note to clients. She said that even if Twitter tapped the loans available to it at the beginning of the year, the company may be almost out of options, the year is over, so Twitter's cash may be nearly, if not already, dried up, along with Elon Musk's options, Brian wrote 
guessing. <laughs> Say, saying maybe. The, that entire paragraph could have just been maybe Twitter is in trouble. And it would have been just as informative and factual. Uh, because of the way that Musk operates, the social media company's troubles pose a threat to his whole business empire. Despite being the second wealthiest person in the country, Musk is curiously cash poor. Well, okay, which one is it? Is he in a lot of trouble because he's so poor? Uh, or is he the second wealthiest person in the world? So, so hilarious. Scott Galloway did the same thing a couple of years ago. He said, there's no way Musk can afford to buy Twitter, uh, even though he's worth hundreds of billions of dollars and Twitter isn't. There's no way he could afford to buy it. All right. Uh, he doesn't take a salary from Tesla. True. Uh, he's, uh, he has stock-based compensation incentives only. He, he can buy Tesla stock at a discount uh, subject to him earning the uh, milestones laid out in his 2018 CEO Performance Award plan. And while he owns about 20% of the EV maker, it may not be that much anymore. Uh, public documents filed in March show that about 63% of those shares are pledged as collateral to secure certain personal indebtedness, you know, like the private jets. I think the private jets are probably owned by SpaceX and Tesla, the corporations, not by Elon Musk, the individual. Um, I, I guess this is going to be in the article later, so I'll skip it. This is why using Tesla stock to source cash all the time gets hairy. If Tesla shares fall below a certain level, the banks can call in those personal loans, leaving Musk on the hook. And the quickest way for Tesla stock to drop off a cliff is for investors to get wind of a big Musk sale. And of course, he needs to make sure he still holds on to all of the Tesla stock he's pledged as collateral to the banks. Unfortunately, though, the easiest way for Musk to fill the gaping hole in Twitter's balance sheet is to sell Tesla shares. You see how this could be a problem. Well, it could be a problem if you don't mention at what price the stock was trading when Elon pledged the shares and how much the shares have appreciated between then and now. Uh, then you might think that it's a problem, Lynette. Sometimes, when he's really hard up, Musk borrows money from SpaceX, a private company that lost a combined $1.5 billion in 2021 and 2022. Uh, he borrowed $1 billion from the company when he bought Twitter and paid the loan back within a month. Well, so what's the problem, Lynette? Uh, <laughs> so funny. Uh, but he had to sell $4 billion worth of Tesla shares to do it. Well, not to pay back a $1 billion loan, he didn't, to complete the Twitter purchase. Uh, he had to sell a bunch of Tesla shares. Using his wealth and power, Musk has built himself a separate reality where there are no real consequences for the risk he takes. But keeping the lights on at Twitter, sorry, X, is testing its limits more and more by the day. Lynette Lopez assumes, guesses, predicts. Uh, we'll see how well she does. If Twitter files for bankruptcy, uh, then we'll know Lynette Lopez's suspicion proved correct. Uh, Life on Earth 1... All of this money incinerating activity from the beginning of the Twitter deal to this very moment could not have come at a worse time. For decades, Musk has operated in a placid economy where interest rates were near zero. But Musk started buying Twitter right as central banks around the world began hiking rates in an effort to combat inflation. That means the cost of servicing his debt is getting more expensive, making it harder for him to get new loans. It's a shift so dramatic that it could rip a hole in the universe through which Musk's reality collapses into our own. Uh, so we've got some zero interest rate policy absurdity uh, here, borrowing the phrase from Mark B. Spiegel, who talks about Tesla being the poster child for zerp absurdity. The outlook for Tesla's business doesn't help him much either. The company's share of the EV market has fallen as competitors have swarmed in. Uh, so we saw that chart just a moment ago. I'll refresh your memory on it. There's the chart. That's how much people, uh, that's how much each brand has increased its EV sales year over year in the U.S. The chart would look the same if I were using global numbers. These are just the most recent numbers I have handy to show you. The company's share of the EV market has fallen as competitors have swarmed in. What, what really happened was last year, competitors had such a terrible year that it was easy for them to sell more than, you know, 60% more this year. So if you had, if you sold 1,000 EVs last year and you sell 2,000 this year, you're taking market share from Tesla, where they went from 380,000 vehicles sold last year 
to 485,000 vehicles sold this year, right? That's how the market share calculation works. All you need is dozens of competitors who did terribly last year to lose market share this year as they do, you know, better than a little better than terrible this year. The new entrance prompted Musk to start cutting prices for his cars at the beginning of 2023. Oh, sure, yeah. It was the competition coming that made Elon lower his prices, not the fact that Tesla was ramping up production into a higher interest rate environment where the economy was worse. Uh, and as a result, Tesla's profitability is under serious pressure. Sure, the, uh, Tesla's still uh, producing profits, but they aren't as big as the record high quarters were. So that's serious pressure. The company has plans to expand its manufacturing capabilities, but no plans to refresh its aging fleet of vehicles. So I guess uh, Lynette has been asleep through the, uh, the Project Highland refresh, the Model 3 Plus refresh. Unless, of course, you count the Cybertruck, which most do not. Uh, most being Jalopnik, uh, another uh, Tesla Q affiliate organization. Last month, Tesla threw a launch event to celebrate the delivery of 10 Cybertrucks, 10. Uh, there were way more than 10. I was there. Uh, <laughs> there may have only been 10 handed over to new buyers, but they've produced a lot more than 10 on that line. There, there were more than 10 parked in front of the main entrance after the event was over. Uh, and then, you know, that's not counting the ones that are on display in showrooms across the country. I think there's 20 of those. Uh, the least expensive model, priced at $60,000, will not be available until 2025, according to the company. Vicki Bryan told me she expects Musk to continue to siphon money from Tesla in obscure ways. But the question is, how much money will there be to siphon exactly, and for how long will he need to do that? Well, there's about $26 billion worth of cash at Tesla right now, according to the most recent quarterly uh, income statement. And Tesla continues to post positive free cash flow, so expect that number to get bigger as time goes by. Uh, the only thing we're waiting on is for Elon to cry uncle, said Brian, hopefully, uh, for her short position if she has one. In her view, which is based on 30 years of investing in distressed assets, any equity in the company has already been erased by Musk's antics. Okay, except that equity is a measurable amount of money and it's been growing, Take a look at the balance sheet for Tesla, Vicky Bryan. If you don't believe me, check out the line called retained earnings. The retained earnings number keeps getting bigger. Uh, it's grown by, you know, 10 billion-ish dollars over the past year as Tesla retains uh, the positive net income uh, inception to date after having uh, more than made up for all the losses that happened before 2020. Uh, as for the debt, the banks have been unable to unload it at 85 cents in the dollar, and she thinks they'll be lucky to get 40 cents. So we've switched topics here from Tesla to Twitter uh, without saying so. By all accounts, Twitter has a credit problem, and Brian said that calls for a run-of-the-mill restructuring solution bankruptcy. Uh, okay, so uh, Vicky Brian has gone from Tesla Q to Twitter Q, or XQ, uh, she thinks Twitter is going to go bankrupt. When Musk tires of robbing Peter to pay Paul, he will default on his Twitter loans. Then the consortium of banks that own the debt can accelerate it. Standard debt agreements come with clauses that allow lenders to force a borrower to pay back all of an outstanding loan if certain requirements like payment are not met. Once that wire is tripped, Twitter can declare bankruptcy. So there's Vicky Bryan on the record saying Twitter, uh, or X, will go bankrupt. Uh, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, Tesla Q thinks Twitter is going to go bankrupt. There is money that has been set on fire that is never coming back, Brian said. We're in the salvage business with Twitter in a restructuring with Elon gone. Uh, so Elon isn't going to own X anymore. Uh, he'll, he'll just throw his hands up, uh, admit defeat, let the company go bankrupt. You can have people looking at it. They can foresee that Elon didn't do anything that can't be reversed and offer instant relief. Will it be enough to save Twitter slash X? Maybe not, but it's the company's only and best hope. <laughs> it's the company's only and best hope is to declare bankruptcy. Thanks, Lynette Lopez. I mean, the other thing they could do is cut costs and grow revenue. 
and you know become cash flow positive report positive earnings uh, well they don't have to report they're a private company so i don't know where you're getting any of this information to begin with with no public filings uh maybe there's some uh you know dead information out there wall street should be thoroughly embarrassed according to reports the banks holding twitter's debt are already expecting to take a $2 billion hit when they can finally sell it off. It's not hard to see why. Well, I mean, if if you can figure out how to not pay back all your debt and have the banks settle with you, that's just normal business. Like, that happens all the time. Uh, people settle with uh, banks on borrowing because, hey, it's advantageous for you to if you can get away with doing it, right? Uh, that's different from declaring bankruptcy. Those are different topics. Um, uh, it's not hard to see why I've said from the jump, there was no money in this Twitter venture and no principles either. Musk was always going to turn Twitter into a reflection of his limited view, his earth, as he put it during his manic rambling at DealBook. Not a place for the average user. I never expected Musk's fanboys to understand that. But I did expect bankers who are supposed to understand who pays for what in a media business to get in. Uh, to get it. In the end, there's a real chance Wall Street investors will wind up owning the shambolic mess that is Twitter. One of the few blessings to come from this fiasco is that when that happens, at least they'll know what not to do with it. At least the Wall Street bankers will be able to run X better than Elon Musk did. Maybe they'll be able to innovate at the same pace Jack and Parag did before Elon took over. You know, it only took them four years to make an edit button. Did they ever make the edit button? I know it took them four, year, four or more years to try. All right, Lynette Lopez is a senior correspondent at Business Insider who's hating hard on Tesla today. That's the article from Lynette Lopez, just full of lies, mistruths, uh, misrepresentations, distortions. That's what you get when you read Lynette Lopez articles. Hopefully I've been some help to you providing some context to uh, her diatribe. Uh, if it can be rightly called that, I think it can. What do you think of Lynette's article? Let me know in the comments below. Leave your, uh, your wit and wisdom for me in the comments on whatever platform you're watching this. If you're watching me on Patreon, uh, supporting me there, or on X, or by joining my YouTube channel, I'll leave you a link here on YouTube to, describe, to subscribe to my channel for free if you want to do that. But thank you to my two executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com, and I'll see you in the next one.